And then Rebecca texts him, I have a surprise for you tonight. Cookie emoji, kiss emoji. Yeah. And I just wanted on the record that at this point in the show, the producers have now used both taco and cookie as stand-ins for vagina. <laughs> I feel like the, <laughs> I feel like the next scene is literally just going to be Rebecca deep frying an entire tilapia. <laughs> He opens the door to her apartment. A bunch of eggplants fall out. The director wanders in front of the camera. My daughter told me that's what it means. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright. And sitting at a climate control station in a panic, keeping track of minute changes in the atmospheric conditions of a nearby room in his house, <laughs> is proud new father Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Damn it, Heath, this is a get ahead. My son could be in college by now. Think, think. <laughs> okay. You're not going to monitor the atmospheric conditions of your child at college age? You know what? Really? Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Very smart. Yeah, thank you. And we're also joined by veteran guest maskist and... Eli's foil in the universe, which makes me very happy personally. <laughs> Moishi Globalist is here. Moishi, thanks for joining us. One world, one people, He, Thank you for having me. <laughs> I also want to add that Moishi is wearing a full suit right now. Yeah. I learned that earlier. He dressed He's wearing up for our record, a suit everyone. and tie. Yeah. Yeah. Get on my fucking level. <laughs> okay. I'm and no pants. pants. And no pants. <laughs> Eli's wearing pants. So that's a nice yeah. step up. Moishi is not. All right, Moishi, let's get right into it. What are we going to be breaking down today? Well, today we watched Vindication Episode 1. It's a simple story about a man who, after bludgeoning a man to death with the Captain America shield, is stripped of his title, moves to a small town, <laughs> finds Jesus, and uses the super soldier serum running through his veins to not have sex with women who aren't his wife. I'm going to be honest with you two. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I, I was incredibly high while watching this, and I yeah, watched it, sounds like it right after Captain and the Winter Soldier. And, it. um, and it was, uh, and they've just tied together in my head. Mm. <laughs> so what you're saying is it's way better. It's much better. Yeah. Well, I, I think part of what happened is that this show, it became a vacuum because this show is genuinely remorselessly about fucking nothing. Very much. It is so. the Seinfeld <laughs> of cop dramas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, it's also the story of what happens to whores who eat Mexican food, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge. It, it we'll, is. We'll, that we'll will make there. sense yeah. at a certain point. It really will. We'll cross that bridge. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this episode? <laughs> well, if you loved the first season of Law and Order, but you missed that couple who posts on Instagram about how they survived emotional infidelity, <laughs> you will love this TV episode. Yeah, it's CSI Jesus, and there's a <laughs> lot of episodes of it. I'm very excited. We're going to be doing the first one. And is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I'll go first. Best worst twist ending. And I, I don't That's a great pick. I don't want to give it away, but like this supersedes any M. Night Shamalama any ending. Mm -hmm. This is so fucking stupid. It's insane. I, I watched this whole thing being like, okay, boring Christian thing. Yeah, stupid stuff. Poisonous. Got it. Got it. Wow. Okay, this is <laughs> insane so yes for, for clarity and again i will not give it away the framing of this episode is a cop interviewing a guy about a murder and if at the end of the episode the guy had stood up and been like you're free to go i'm not a cop i'm a birthday clown honk honk <laughs> and then bounced away it would have been less stupid than the twist ending this episode actually uses i would have been more likely to predict what eli just said than what <laughs> happened yeah absolutely i was gonna go with best worst very obvious lying trope that mm -hmm. you get in these cop shows. So, you know, like the interviews happening, the interrogation and the, the cop asks a question and then the suspect or whoever is like, you know, they, they say something that's just in a terrible, terrible tone of voice and very clearly lying with a bunch of pauses. And the cop is supposed to catch on to that. But the movie in this case is just like, yup, that was the truth. You are speaking <laughs> the truth. If everyone was doing the person who's too famous to be on Law and Order is acting like they're acting, acting, that's the acting in this <laughs> television show. And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst 
affair. My friends, podcast listeners, we will spend 26 minutes of this show going over an affair where nothing happens. Heath and I have a more sexual relation. Heath, Moishi, and I have a more sexual relationship. Thank you. <laughs> In the three I don't person- know if that's as impactful as you're hoping here because it's very... <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, I get what you're trying to say, though. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to tell you all about Vindication, episode one. Dildos, get your dildos here. Big dildos, little dildos, medium-sized dildos, unbeatable prices. Eli, get Eli your um, what are you doing in this Arby's parking lot? Oh, hey, dildos? I- I'm trying to get some of that sweet, sweet AdamandEve.com money. Oh, what's AdamandEve.com? They're the number one adult toy superstore. They're so famous, there's literally memes about them now. Yeah, but Eli, AdamandEve.com is the number one adult superstore because they carry good products. They're sex and sex work positive, LGBTQ friendly. Hell, they were the first mail order contraceptive business in America. Plus, they give you 50% off almost any one item, free shipping, and 10 tantalizing gifts when you use the code AWFUL at checkout. They do? They do. So... Do you offer anything like that in the parking lot here? Uh, I have this rubber band. That could be for a penis. Yeah, I think most people are going to go with adamandeve.com instead. What's that code again, Noah? That's awful. A-W-F-U-L. Offer code awful at checkout at adamandeve.com. You could wrap it around. No, I, yeah, no, I know what you're suggesting, like, logistically. Okay. Thanks again for helping us with the episode, Moishi. No problem, guys. I mean, when's this one uh, going to air anyway? Oh, right. About that. This is a get ahead. So we're actually not sure exactly when we're going to use it, but sometime. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, if you don't mind, we're hoping you'd pre-record some topical references for us. You want to pre-record topical references? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and if it works, we'll just kind of like dribble them into the episode. Okay. So um, just just start with this one. Yeah. That one right there on page 12. Mm -hmm. Man, reminds me of when Joe Biden fell down. Solid. I yes. mean, you know he's going Topical. to. Right? Topical, it sure will be. <clears throat> yeah. Let's just do the next one. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> did you hear about South America? I heard they lost about a Brazilian more people to COVID. Okay, this one, <laughs> this one seems kind of, kind of in poor taste. Okay, but we're only going to put it in if it's been enough time. Yeah, we'll keep it tasteful. Yeah. Oh God, do I have to do this next one? Yeah, it's very important. You do. <clears throat> Gosh, I can't believe Marjorie Taylor Greene died on Facebook Live after dropping a weight on her throat and nobody helped her. We all just watched her choke to death. That's, guys, this is super specific. That is specific, but it is legal, technically. And hopeful. Yep. Okay, one last one. This one just says Eli is dead. Yeah, life insurance makes us do that one every week. Yeah, that tracks. And we're back. And we're going to start with some intriguing music. And I know that because I had the subtitles on and it said intriguing music. <laughs> now, I was really hoping this would continue throughout the episode. Like people are acting and underneath it just says excellent acting. Talented <laughs> actors talking. Yeah, I hate this part because this is the part of every high production value Christian movie where I let myself believe for a goddamn microsecond that this won't be a giant hot pile of garbage because they've gotten good <laughs> at cinematography, right? They've learned, they've adapted. But then then they start acting, and I remember why we're here. <laughs> and then you remember where you are. Did you not yeah. enjoy the acting in this? Mm. I thought they were pulling off their characters, making good choices, no? I'll tell you this. I thought the cop was actually pretty decent. I thought the wife was actually terrific. I actually think she had some real chops. She was good. I think the main dude, who again really, really does look like a more punchable version of the new Captain America. Yes, he does. I thought he was pretty terrible. John Walker did nothing wrong. Uh, that's Derek, by the way. And Derek, he's, yeah. Derek's going to get interrogated by Detective Travis here. And yeah, Derek, it's like this weird... J. Crew ad with a police interrogation attached to it. Like, when you're getting interrogated by the police, our navy blue Henley and sensible chinos are the perfect pairing. What I love is that it's so clear that Christian movies got together their two or three most attractive actors for this cop drama. They were like, no, no, no. this is going to be the real shit. We need the people who are strong sixes. Come on, get, get Kyle. God, he really did look like a Kyle. 
I don't know his fucking name, but he looks like a Derek. Kyle. But it's Kyle. Kyle it's Kyle. Yeah. We all know it's Kyle. We'll use them interchangeably throughout the episode. <laughs> we also begin by focusing on a, a lady mopping wrong for like a severe amount of time. She's just mopping in a semicircle, staring hard into the camera, waiting for it to move away from her. It's just like <laughs> you guys said I was just for like the beginning of the scene. This. The shot is so long. Are you trying to fill 26 minutes of footage with four lines of dialogue? Why are you still watching? I'm running out of shapes to mop in. (laughs) It's circle and line. Damn it. (laughs) And behind the one-way mirror, when uh, Kyle sits down with Copy McCopperson, a guy turns to another guy and says, is this Mr. 700? And he says, yes, it is. Okay. Is it a one-way mirror? Because isn't that all mirrors? I feel like it's a two-way mirror. Right? It's a two-way mirror. That's where okay, thank you. Because yeah. that mirrors normally are one way. A two-way yeah. mirror would be glass. <laughs> That's not a mirror. Well, so I, it's a one way I mean, it, there's a mirror yeah, on a one side mirror. and you can see through from the back on the other side. Now it's I've a one way. It. It's a one way mirror because is it a one way mirror because you can only Yeah, it's called a one way mirror. Listeners, tell it's called one way what is it? Yeah, I just Googled it. I'm not happy about this. Do you think real interrogation rooms have that or do they just have fucking cameras? <laughs> they probably just have cameras. At this well, yeah, this one actually just, just has a cameras. camera. Yeah, they're just watching on a camera. Is the mirror fooling anybody at this point in time? Do you think anybody goes into an interrogation <laughs> room and is like, guys, I just want to say, I I really love the design. Of st- like, it really opens the room. Opens and, I'm glad the that space up. I, and I'm glad that this is a private conversation. You know what? I'm going to confess into this perfectly normal mirror <laughs> really quietly. Nobody sees me, I'm right? I'm sorry. Do you mind stepping out of the room? <laughs> I'd like to whisper into this mirror that I actually did it, if you give me just a second. <laughs> was, was there a point where people were was like Disney, right? Like nobody knew that technology existed and it was just fooling criminals all over the fucking world. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they caught the phone. Okay, why is it called a one-way mirror? Is it because it, it's, it's only way, a mirror one way? It's only a mirror on one side as opposed to those mirrors that face both directions and are both mirrors glass. both ways. He, this can't possibly, it's a one-way mirror because yes, it's a, the mirror only works in one direction. That's pretty much all mirrors. No, no mirrors work in two directions. Well, no, wait, no, hold on. He might be right here because that's, no. not, that, that's not actually true, right? Mirrors like, have have to have like a dark back so that you get yeah. a mirror image. Like, like yeah, like a, a the back of a regular mirror is like a frame, right? It's not like if you took a mirror off your wall, the other side would be reflective. Mirror gate. Everybody, uh, <laughs> jump in with your opinions on this. <laughs> No, he's right. They're right. A regular bathroom mirror is a one-way mirror. Yes. So calling one-way this a glass. one-way mirror is, called, is silly. I think it's called one-way glass. No, is it it's called, called a one-way mirror. I That's don't a, know. It's a bad title. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. This is the important takeaway of the episode. <laughs> this was only 30 minutes long, so we've got about an hour of material <laughs> on <Exactly>. here. <laughs> so he sits, Copy McCopperson sits Kyle down. Yeah. And he's like, uh, I've got a few questions for you. <laughs> But he starts, he's got a, a recorder, like a little digital voice recorder. And he starts by saying, Derek Taylor, 8.30 p.m. That's the name of the suspect. But he picks up the voice recorder and screams into it from inches away. <laughs> Derek Taylor, 8.30 p.m. We call then, that a moishy around here. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he puts it down on the table. So that one little part is going to be so much louder than the rest of the normal recording. Yeah. <laughs> it just flash cuts forward to him listening to it. Ow! Oh, oh god damn it i hate clipping me. can we get somebody to edit this yeah should have gotten wav plugins for my little personal <laughs> recorder but yeah he says he has some questions Derek asks if he should uh have an, an attorney present and the cop's like why we're just we're just good friends having a chat and he's i like, promise not to trick you you're fine <laughs> hey here's some legal advice you could take from a podcast don't ever talk to the fucking cops without your lawyer present yeah for any reason no matter what Unless you're super duper innocent, in which case they'll totally help you. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Or a person of color, especially. Because remember, the biggest job of a police officer is to find the truth, no matter how much extra work it is for them. (laughs) That's what they care about. Policemen care about the truth and people of color. And you know what? With the way things have been in the news lately, I know this is a good ad, but trust me, this will still be relevant. The way things have been in the news lately... They owe you one. So, yeah, you do not need an attorney in that situation. At all other times, do not ever talk to a cop without your attorney present. Yeah. Ever. 
And remember, tell them as many versions of the story as you can think of, <laughs> yeah. because that way they can help you figure out the one that'll look the best in court. That's sprinkle they, in some easily yeah. provable lies at the beginning. That, that's a good way to, to do make it, yeah. sure they're paying attention. By the way, serious trick: cops will say, "Okay, so that's your story," and repeat it back to you. That's a trick. You have to then answer. No, it's not a story. That's what really happened. That's seriously what they do. Heath, you okay, man? <laughs> I, I got that helped. That's helped me in the past. Okay. Wait, I would love to be like, so wait, is the, is the counter to that then? Oh, so you're saying it's a story. All right, fine. I did murder those people. <laughs> well, no, if you just go on and like accept the use of the word story there. That's a hint to the cop that you told a story. But true stories are still stories. It, it, it's a thing they do. Well, are these the cops that only patrol that bridge where one person tells only lies and the yeah. other one tells only Sometimes I go to that bridge. Yes, Eli. And I got pulled over once on that bridge. Yes. Is is this admissible in court? If you go, if the cop shows up in court, is he going to be like, he then referred to the events that transpired as a story. <laughs> and the jury's like, rebel, 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 murder. Wait, <laughs> did he say story or did you say story? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's how it works, but that's how they, they, they zero in on this and they are more suspicious if you don't correct the word story. Keith, I don't want to zoom too closely in on your personal history as a drug dealer slash lunch lady, <laughs> but did a cop try that on you and you were like, no, it's not a story. And he then went, ah, you got me basically I yes like to only deal with those police officers basically yes that <laughs> happened i mean a lot of it is probably i'm a white guy and i look like a cop nazi but <laughs> also the thing you said that i was saying yes both it's like the am i free to go thing have you heard this no what's no. this so this is like one of those fremen on the land things that like if a cop stops you and you say am i free to go they have to let you go and stop talking to you or arrest you. There's no choice. That is not true. I have I, to imagine that's not true. Yeah. So the first time I got busted in Washington Square Park, I was all full of that knowledge. So the cop was like, hey, man, did you just throw that pipe into the bush? And I was like, am I free to go? And he was like, no, no. I'm asking you a question. And I was like, <laughs> you have to arrest me. And he was like, what? okay, I will arrest you then. Great. <laughs> You see how this game works? Like, like he was going to be like, oh, I couldn't answer his riddles three. Good luck, <laughs> young sir. And I just wander <laughs> off into the night. So don't talk to cops. Yes. Don't talk to cops. That's the moral story. Get a lawyer. I'm so sorry. Was it was it get a lawyer or don't get a lawyer? We've we've gone in a lot of directions get here. A lot of get you know the what? Free Draw lawyer. your own conclusions. Sure. Should we talk about this fucking show? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to cut into this guy's memories Story. Story, right? Story. No, not story. But not. Oh, you called it a story. Right. You're going to jail. See? That's jail talk. See how it works? That's jail. That's yeah. guilty man talk. <laughs> and now Heath's curse is broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cop until I get someone else to admit that their series of events was a story. <laughs> That's how we hire cops in this That's country. That's how we, yeah. You know, police unions didn't work out, so we're doing that now. But he's his son is playing in the car and we're supposed to see that he's a bad dad because he's like, don't touch anything in the car I let you sit in. Okay, but he is a bad dad. He's like fixing up his, you know, cherry Mustang, 500,000 horses, torque, blah, blah, blah. Also, he has a child and can't really afford any of his shitty garbage hobby. So, yes, he's the worst. Yeah. I also love that he has a poster of the car on his wall. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yes, of his own car on the wall of his garage. <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote in my notes, he might as well have a poster of the word car on the wall <laughs> of his garage. Right. And the cop is like, okay, yeah, you're garbage, dad. Uh, Follow-up question. Did your shirt have sleeves at this point? And he's like, it did not. No, it did no not. sleeves. No, it did not. Dude was yoked, though. Let's be real. Yeah. He, he was, was yoked, yoked up. Yeah. yeah, he was swole. It's that superhero. It's that super soldier serum. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where the wife comes in and she has been going through his phone and she wants to know who Rebecca is. Yeah. yeah. She says, who's Rebecca? And he says, Rebecca who? And I was like, <laughs> making it worse, dude. Making it so much worse. <laughs> now, if I may pull the camera back slightly, we will learn in this show, spoiler alert, He's not fucking Rebecca. No. So what text did she read on his phone 
that oh, she's, she's like, being like she's being like flirty. She's she's like she's like I miss you. Like when do I get to see you next? And he has so clearly done this fucking before because he answers with the most cliche yet effective of the like infidelity lines, which is like, well, I don't know what the texts say, so I guess I can't answer that, can I? <laughs> right? Because he's trying to he's trying to figure out what she fucking knows. All right. Well, my note literally just said this guy definitely fucks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as we will learn, it's not an Instagram the- story. It's an Instagram reality. We talked <laughs> and just normal. And then to build tension in the scene, because they want you to they don't want you to know who did it yet. Right. He oh, as she's like getting all mad at him and she's like, like, who the fuck's Rebecca? He opens up his like his like toolbox drawer. And amongst <laughs> his like wrenches, there's just a fucking Bowie it's knife. Machete. It's so good. A machete. Out of nowhere. It's genuinely, I think, a Bowie knife, right? Like it's not, it's just to be clear for the listeners, it is not a pocket knife. It's not like a tool knife. He's just got like all these car wrenches and a fucking Bowie knife. Yes, he does. Well, you know, maybe he read Christine, Stephen King's novel where the car comes to life and goes after a man's family because it's haunted by the spirit of a ghost who falls in love with its owner. Maybe. And you need to stab your car to death sometimes. Okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> let's remember, he's telling a story to a detective here. So, so he mentioned the knife. <laughs> he's talking to a detective and he's like, yeah, so then I uh, checked my tool cabinet for my giant murder knife. Can we pause? Can we take a time out on the interrogation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know a lot about tools, cars, or really masculinity in general. But even I know that's a weird place to keep your murder knife. <laughs> well, you know, that kid was misbehaving. Again, there's lots of good reasons to have a murder knife. But here's what's amazing. This show is so stupid. It hasn't established who gets murdered yet. So in the context of this scene, it's just like, and by the way, there is a knife. Don't worry. This will be a cop show eventually. Yeah. Right now, it's just a couple having a weird fight about texts. But they they will. They will eventually. And... <laughs> To add to the Christianity, in the middle of their fight, she goes, I don't know how to explain to our son why daddy doesn't go to church anymore. And I wrote in my notes, why doesn't daddy go to church anymore? He's an A word. Yeah, the, the Christianity is sprinkled very, very loosely throughout this fucking show. Ah, I would say that the cap falls off that sprinkle jar somewhere three quarters <laughs> of the way right, through. Right, until the fucking end. Yeah. Yeah. Also, by the way, this actor playing Derek is wildly distracted by the towel that somebody gave him. Oh, yeah. He's doing so much space work. Yeah. He's he's flossing with it. He's got he's around the neck, <laughs> off the neck, over the shoulder, <laughs> off the shoulder. I thought those were ninjas. Yeah. Don't give this actor this is like this is like Moishi. You gotta clear off the table in front of you. No <laughs> objects. No. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So we cut back to the cop. And the cop's like, so this relationship with Miss Jennings, uh, did you turn into fucking or what? what <laughs> is, is there fucking in this story? <laughs> right. He basically does the, the old cop trick. He's like, so when did you stop cheating on your wife? And Derek is like, I didn't. <laughs> and the cop's like, oh, that was easy. Yeah. This okay. is like a non-musical version of the that scene from Greece where they're like, tell me more. Tell me. Except the cop's just like, get me the fucking good stuff. And the guy's just a fucking <laughs> right. nothing. Just gives him a nothing. Hey, man, one more time. You sure you don't want a lawyer? You're like super bad at this. You You're said so bad murder. At this. You said murder knife a moment ago. <laughs> and then again, because these people have no idea how to set up tension, he goes, did your wife ever get violent with you? Again, spoiler alert. The person who is murdered is his mistress. They never fucked, but the person who's murdered is his mistress. So what the show is now setting up is maybe the wife killed the mistress because we're going to get a flashback on her menacingly chopping vegetables. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He has a <laughs> Vietnam style flashback to his wife. <laughs> angrily chopping vegetables it's, it's like a fucking like blooper from the opening sequence from dexter right like she's just fucking mangling them so the cop's like all right did you have an affair or not and he's like all right i'll get to the good stuff get to the good stuff so now we see him getting out of his sweet car at his mistress's place yeah and we see a i guess we're led to believe right now it's a private investigator spying yep who looks like a Backstreet Boy bench player, approximately. <laughs> I wrote, a circus barker is watching him for tips. 
Right. So it's supposed to be a PI, theoretically, maybe hired by his wife to spy on him because she thinks he's cheating. Turns out it's not exactly that. We'll, we'll get there. Yep. He walks up to the front door of this woman he's maybe trying to have an affair with. And right as he's about to knock on the door, he gets a text from his wife. And it's like, <laughs> this is actually funny. I laughed. He's like, can you pick up trash bags and not fuck another woman whenever you get a chance? Just really quick. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote, can you pick up trash bags, dot, 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 so the audience knows she's a fucking bitch. Right. The Pure Flix viewership is like, man, nag, nag, nag. Am I right? Of course you're <laughs> sleeping with other women. But she opens up the door and he has showed up uninvited with food he expects her to eat. Tacos to be specific, right? Yeah. Because the metaphor is not is not lightly layered into this <laughs> scene. <laughs> Podcast listener, let me assure you, Women love it when you randomly show up at their house, especially when you expect them to eat food you brought over. Yeah. Hot tip. Yeah. He, he comes in all fucking awkward. He's just like, hey, I came for your tacos. I mean, I, I came in your taco. Fuck. I mean, I, I came with Mexican food. Can we just fuck? <laughs> but, but that's not exactly what he does. He's like, Hey, he decided to be spontaneous. I brought you this <laughs> blank paper bag of tacos that he has as the prop. <laughs> and he's like, Okay, bye. And he starts to leave. <laughs> well, again, that's the best part because she's like, oh, do you want to come inside? And he's like, nope, I just brought you tacos. I have errands to do. To, uh, Goodbye now. I got to get trash bags and not have sex with you. It's the first item on my errands list. And he dressed up for it. Yeah. <laughs> like me. It's like me doing a podcast. Like yeah. he shows up <laughs> fucking suit and tie. The viewpoint of this show is that cheating is showing up to deliver someone tacos. I have had an affair with everyone from Grubhub who's made it to my home recently. <laughs> and then he's like, well, I don't want to, you know, push this affair relationship to the next level. And <laughs> she's like, oh, no, this is awkward. Uh, we're not having sex. I don't want to have sex with you. It's so awkward. She's like, oh, do you want to come inside? And he's like, I don't think we should have anal sex tonight. And she's like, whoa. No, no, no. No, you just came to my house with I food. Just, it's I just meant eat the tacos. I do want those. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll watch you eat the tacos I brought. <laughs> what do you think happened? What do you think happened that night? Would, like literally, was he just sitting there just like watching her shovel taco meat into her fucking mouth? Yeah, what the happened is every Heath date ever. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, okay. Do you like moving? Your mouth is full. It's fine. <laughs> do you mind if I, I listen podcast. to a podcast while we, <laughs> while I, while you eat? Can I, while you, while I, while I? You know what's funny about the bill of right now? It's just, never mind. Guys, you, you, you enjoy it. Here's the guac. It's a bag of car. I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and then to end the scene, she sketchily closes the blinds so nobody sees him eat her taco, if you know what I mean. I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> it's later clarified <laughs> in the scene that they don't have sex. So she closes the blind so that she can eat tacos. Yeah, while that's, what, that's what you mean is yeah. literally eat tacos. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, well, now that I've been attacked by this very relatable content about most of my dating life, we're going to take another quick break, and then we'll be back with more Vindication, Episode 1. Okay, if it was your dating life, you'd be eating the tacos and she'd be watching. Let's be real. I brought tacos for you to watch me eat. <laughs> eat, yeah. The Heath and Wright story. Hi, welcome to the mouthwash aisle. How can I help you? Wow, well, they have an employee for that weird. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, do, do you have anything that doesn't come in a giant, unwieldy jug? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, how about a mouthwash that freshens my breath and keeps my mouth healthy without the weird additives or stinging alcohol? No, again, no. But uh, it sounds like you could use Quip. Like, like witty banter? I, 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 look, if you've got a zinger I, that you want to no, share. Uh, <laughs> no, no, silly. Not like that. Quip, the good habits company. They launched a new mouthwash to help you complete your clean. Plus, it comes with a refillable dispenser that's delightful to use and sleek enough to fit on any bathroom counter. So I, I wouldn't have to give up my corner of the sink so that it looks like cleaning solution from an emergency room there? Exactly. You would not need to do that. The refillable dispenser's compact footprint will fit in any bathroom, big or small. And with five colors and two high-end finishes to choose from, you're guaranteed to find a dispenser that matches your style. Plus, Quip's 
refillable mouthwash is good for your mouth and the planet. With a four times concentrated formula, Quip ships less water and more good for you ingredients. Each eco-friendly refill replaces a big, bulky 470 milliliter bottle from one of those other brands once it's diluted. And Quip's refill bottles are made from 100% recyclable plastic. Wow, that does sound good. But what if I run out? Do I, do I have to cut the heart out of a sleeping demon to get more? Okay, you ask that every time you come in, but no, no, you don't. Oh. Um, add a mouthwash refill plan and make sure your rinse never runs out. With a customizable subscription, you can get refills automatically delivered straight to your door every three months. You can stay on top of your swish without lugging any bottles home from the store. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful five right now, you can get $5 off a mouthwash starter kit. That's $5 off a mouthwash starter kit, which includes a refillable dispenser and a 90 dose supply of Quip's four times concentrated formula at getquip.com slash awful five spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful five. Quip, the good habits company. All right. Thanks. Um, now, now, do you guys have amulets of Rathgar? Uh, yeah, aisle four, but um, I, I have to I, cut I the just, heart out of a sleeping like, yep. demon. See, see, not such a dumb question now, is it? I feel like it's a very specific situation. Give you a bad Yelp review. You do? I'll wake that demon. Don't, though. All right, gentlemen, this is our big chance to write a Christian cop drama. So I want you to hit me with your best ideas, okay? Really gritty stuff. All right, all right, nice. Hold them back, let's go. Nice. Uh, okay, what if there's a murderer? Ooh. And uh, he, Ooh, let's Gonna see, stop uh, you right there. Uh, gonna okay. stop you right there. This is pure flicks. So we can't really do murder. Mm. <laughs> I mean, what are we? Action star David A.R. White? <laughs> no, we are no. not. Yeah, I'm still married. Okay, uh, how about this? What about a bank robbery where Ooh. a robbery? No, like with like with guns seems a little much again. Again, we're pure flicks. <laughs> okay, uh, how, how about a story about a car thief who Ooh, finds these? But that's that's someone's car. Though. Okay, 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 okay. How about a guy? He's cheating on his wife. Adultery. Emotionally, though, no, no. Emotionally, he's emotionally. Cheating on his wife. And. Oh, that's it. I, I, my voice went up like I had the rest of an idea, but that's it. That's literally all we could possibly have left to say in your super duper restrictive guidelines. So, I'm done. well, excuse me for not wanting to offend anyone. We are a family company. <sighs> ABC gets to write about murder. Yeah, but they're a bunch of kikes. Yeah, that's, that's true, true, for sure. And we're back. When we left off, Derek threw a bag of tacos at Rebecca and ran away. So that was fun. Also, by the way, during the break, I checked and a one-way mirror is sometimes called a two-way mirror. So it's both. And people call it that sometimes. In fact, there's an article on Snopes called How to Spot a Two-Way Mirror. So hey, speaking of Snopes, has anybody here ever been to a prostitute? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, the founder of Snopes has. <laughs> Sadly. Real, real sad story. But Snopes is real and two-way mirrors, that's a term that's real. Anyway, now we're back in the interrogation room to hear about what happened next. <laughs> I just want to say, I love watching this cop comment on how fucking dumb this script is. Yes! <laughs> that's his whole role within this movie, TV show. Yeah, his whole thing in this TV show is, sorry, is that, um, is that all to your story? Is that what this TV show is about? This TV show is so fucking boring. I don't want to be in this TV show anymore. <laughs> it's like at the end. Have you guys ever seen Now You See Me? Yes, multiple yeah. times. I saw it with you, Moishi. Oh, that's true. We saw it together. It's like that. It's like the end of that scene. I remember you and I actually giggling about this. Remember, there's the end of the scene where more, or maybe it's like the sequel where Morgan Freeman's character is like, I was on your side all along. And Mark Ruffalo's character goes, why didn't you just tell us that? And Morgan Freeman goes, I don't know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know. It says in the fucking script, man. Let's go. And then he steps onto a carousel and magically vanishes <laughs> and forever. Goes away. Yep. And fucking, and this, this cop fulfills the same role. Constantly, this guy, Derek, is telling his story and the cop's just like, Jesus, dude, this doesn't, Come on, you got to help me here. This makes no fucking sense. <laughs> and Derek's just like, no, I know, but I have to say these words. So. I know, it's on the script. So, okay, one of the exact lines from the cop is, so that night, the relationship became consensually physical. <laughs> and Derek's yeah, like, cop trick. okay, okay, it didn't become consensual. I feel like you're tricking me again. I'm going to need that. 
lawyer. That <laughs> Is you that your story? Damn it, you've got me. <laughs> but no, they actually didn't do anything that night. That's established here. Or ever. Yeah. Because then the, the, the detective's like, oh, okay, so you didn't do anything that night. Did you eventually do anything? And he's like, no. And he's like, well, then why is this part of your story? And he's like, I don't know. We needed 26 minutes. We didn't have <laughs> any minutes. And this is technically minutes in the 26 minutes. We also get a flash cut to the the cops watching the video of the interrogation room. And they're like, his prints were all over the place. So we, we know it's him. Why was he... Touching hard surfaces <laughs> all over her apartment while you know, she ate tacos. You bring tacos, you watch her, and you run your hands lovingly over her walls and furniture. Right. I get it. I love picturing the scene, though, right? She's just sitting there on the couch eating tacos, and he's just like, oh, this is a nice table. Oh, this is a nice wall. <laughs> Ooh, is this a vintage lamp? No, Pier 1. Pier oh, one. my God. Marble countertops? I love this marble covered with ink. This is really nice right here. <laughs> Do you mind if I sign your guest book? I mean, it's not your guest book, but it is a piece of paper. Do you mind if I sign it? Just takes a selfie of himself in the house. <laughs> Holding a big kitchen knife. I wonder what to do with this. Yeah. What is this? A cup of skin cells? Let me let me play. I want to play. All right, I'm just going to shake, shake some in. Cool. Take a skin cell, leave a skin cell. <laughs> so now we're going to cut over to the office. And this is probably my favorite scene in the television show. Because at the very beginning of the scene, the actor who plays Derek has to pretend he can read. And it's awesome. <laughs> He's staring so fucking hard at this report. And he's like, hmm, I think it needs to be more numbers. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I have seen more specific technical dialogue in sexual harassment training videos. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of sexual harassment training videos. And yeah, it's fucking crazy. He's just like, yeah, looks good. That first part could use a different layout. You know, so the big client accepts our proposal at the big meeting later this week. Like, it's fucking business, for the business, business, business. gobbly yeah, exactly. Synergy business. If you've ever watched a Hallmark movie, it's it's that kind of generic corporate dialogue. We are in commerce Yes, we are. Lay out the <laughs> commerce. He might as well have a, a like a chart behind him that just has sales up, not sales <laughs> down. <laughs> okay. He doesn't have that. That would have been funny. He does have wooden, fr like antique ornate frames of a beach vacation he didn't take very clearly. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, a fake antique lamp from Pier 1. His office is ridiculous. Yeah. But the intern who he's helping out, this is where she hits on him, right? Because he's like, yeah, just fix the business business. We'll write this dialogue later, business business. And she's like, is there anything else I can do before I leave your office? Well, okay. She says, she asks that, but she says it normal. She's like, so is there anything else you want me to do? And he's like, incubus, you are sexually harassing me. How dare you? <laughs> That's the best part is that this is a Christian's version of the intern was flirting with me. So it's very clearly her being like, oh, thank you for your help with that thing. And you know, the writers are like, oh, she wants it so fucking bad. God. And she's like, no, I'm just, I literally, like, just use, my words will be literal. How about you just always assume <laughs> my words are literal? He's like, well, okay, it seemed like you offered to blow me, but all right, all right. <laughs> Yeah, this movie is filled with best, worst, terrible advice, showing up at a woman's house unannounced, thinking that a woman at work is flirting with you because she said the words, thank you. Yeah. This is truly the how-to guide of being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside, as you watch more of the episodes, because yes, did I watch them? Absolutely. Fuck yeah. You will find <laughs> that there is a heavy recurring theme in each, in multiple episodes of like, this is what you get for being a whore. Like, it's it's actually pretty fucked up, and it gets more yeah. fucked up as the series goes on. If there is an ethos to the first season of Vindication, and I'm pretty sure only season of Vindication, it is, I mean, that's what you get for wearing a skirt that goes above the knee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not great. But now Mistress, the taco eater, is going to confront the intern. Okay. Did you guys realize these were two different women? Until now, no. Like, when she walked in, I was like, "Oh, that wasn't her." The in that was the, a different. I thought she was the intern based on that last scene. No, now it's a different, exactly the same Karen White woman who is Rebecca, the potential mistress. Hey, everybody wants to fuck Captain America. Heath, of course they do. That's right. 
I mean, I do. Chris <laughs> Evans. Oh, mm. well, he's not Captain America anymore. He's not Captain America he, anymore. He is in no. my head. No. That's fair. Yeah, but this is where she's going to confront the intern. She's like, oh, yeah, he was helping you out. Don't see that I don't know what you're playing at. But again, she's not sleeping with him either. This entire television show is based around the idea that these two people are sleeping together, except they're not. So it's crazy. Yeah, this guy's got a lot of drama in his life for a guy not getting his dick sucked anywhere. (laughs) Yeah, he he tries to explain to her. He's like, no, no, I'm not. It's literally just a TSI report thing with business (laughs) words. That's all I was doing. Also, my wife is scary with chopping carrots. Just really aggressive, really scary. Maybe we have sex because of that. But not yet. (laughs) Yeah. So she confronts the intern. She comes into his office and she's like, hey, uh, just in case you were wondering, I totally did not just threaten the intern just now. But how are you? And he's like, yeah, you know, helping out with TSI reports. I hate my marriage. (laughs) She says, why don't you come over tonight and take a break? And then we cut to again, because this this show could not have less subtlety. We cut to other people in the office going She doesn't care that he's married, whisper, whisper. No, she doesn't, whisper, whisper. Are they watching their conversation through a two-way mirror? They must be. They're responding to that conversation? All the glass in the vindication verse is one way. (laughs) (laughs) See, it's already a better show when we're reinventing it. And then, I would say in the most important scene in the entire fucking episode... Someone dribbles poison into a beverage. Well, hold on, hold on. So okay. what happens is you're getting you're getting ahead because it cuts back to the cop, and the cop is like, "Was there any tension between them? Right? Was there any like? Did you notice any like conflict between the intern and and your mistress?" And then he has a flashback to the intern poisoning the mistress's yes, coffee, right? Which he chooses not to tell the cop about, and which never matters again in the entire fucking episode and he was he was inches away from this poisoning happening we see in the flashback he was standing next to her being like is that boy po- ah, don't worry it's fine it's fine I'm not gonna so tell anyways i said to him oh you also gotta- it's a baggie of like white powder and i don't know if it was supposed to be coke like what or laxative what was did, who it's poison was supposed, it was supposed to, i think it was supposed to be laxative i think I think what the show was going for was a red herring like with the knife, but they didn't realize that an unused knife and someone poisoning another person can't be the same kind of red herring (laughs) because that will never matter. Right. The only way that makes sense, because we will learn that a fair lady, the one who ate the tacos, is murdered by her ex-boyfriend. Okay. Spoilers. Spoilers. She's murdered by her ex-boyfriend. But the only way that this poisoning scene makes sense is if she was murdered before the poison took no, effect. No, 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 no. <laughs> or, or it wasn't poison, it was a laxative. And I'll tell you why I want that to be the case. Sure. Because that means somewhere on a DVD box of Vindication Season 1, there is a deleted scene of Rebecca furiously shitting her pants <laughs> at work. And I will buy the DVD box just to watch it. I'll buy all the DVD boxes in <laughs> existence. Right? And he's just like, did you notice her behavior change at work? And then he just has a flashback to her just being like... <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing suspicious. <laughs> nope, none that I remember. Genuinely, nothing comes to mind. <laughs> So now it's time for him to go to men's group. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So this is happening because Rebecca came up with this idea when he was like, no, I don't know if I can sneak out after work. I'm supposed to be home. I can't come see you. And she's like, well, why don't you go to this men's group? And then you leave that early. You've got an excuse with the men's group. You leave early and you come see me. What is a men's group? And why does it take place in the workplace? I mean, that's a thing. Men's groups are a fucking thing. Is it? I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Like an in-office Bible study? No, 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 no. That's not what they are. I don't think no, that. That's no, what the no. movie or the show says they are. But like, I think there is a men's group thing. Yeah. It's just like, I think it's group therapy specifically for men. Oh, see, I, I've heard of it, but I didn't know what it was. A friend of mine said he was in a men's group and I was just like, 
You're in a men's group. Like, in my head, this was, like, super negative, but then he didn't really describe it. Okay, so there's, like, a, a thing that's not horrible that's called a men's group sometimes. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's not horrible. I, I think it very well might be horrible, but I think it's just – I think it's, like, a group of men talking about, like, masculinity and, like, trying to be better men. I, no, I would absolutely I've heard. Not. I've heard. This, this is, is what I've heard. I don't know. Study. This is just what I've – you know what? I don't think we should be judging people who may have gone to a men's group. <laughs> this is a in-work Bible study because they have workbooks. And they're talking about Bible passages from last week. Well, so, okay. And can I just clarify one little thing? Please. For our listeners, I have a very short attention span. <laughs> I did not realize on my first watch through that this was a men's group. Like, I'm sure I was fucking checking my phone or something. And so I tuned into the scene and I thought, I thought this was just a meeting at work. <laughs> <laughs> So he sits down and they're all like the first guy, like there's these two black guys who are seated next to each other because that's where they go. And <laughs> and they start one of them's just like, look, before we get started, I just want to tell you guys, look, you all know what's been going on between me and Natasha. And, um, you know, ever since I cheated on her and she took the kids and I'm just like, this is a weird board meeting. <laughs> yeah, the guy he finishes and the guy's like. Okay, so sales were up 3% in the second quarter. <laughs> but that's genuinely what I thought was happening the first time I watched the episode. <laughs> no, but we're, we're at a Christian-themed men's group now. Yeah, that's what's yeah. actually happening. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And this guy who starts it is like, yeah, so, you know, me and uh, Natasha, it's not going great with uh, with her. She met someone else. Um is uh is atheism wrong? Does anybody know <laughs> what religion is the right one so yeah. that I can uh, work this out? <laughs> What's amazing is they can't be like she's sleeping with him, I slept with them, this that or the other. So they just have him say half of the sentences that lead to conversations about adultery. He's like, "My marriage is going well. She's met someone else who she's Ever since I first. <laughs> it's the yada, yada, yada episode from Seinfeld. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Also, just small thing at the very beginning of this scene, they try to do like a cold open on this men's oh, group. Oh, yes. I was so and sad it's that we. So silly. So we see this men's group and it's halfway through a sentence and one guy's like, uh, and Paul still didn't understand the thing i said before the scene started and they all <laughs> it's so dumb i told him again and again and he still didn't understand it everyone's like that's classic paul that's classic paul <laughs> totally hilarious apropos of the thing that uh, the audience didn't hear super right. super funny i have a fan theory that we actually do see paul in this episode later on and we will we will we'll get to that really Ooh. yeah i have i have a pretty strong theory i know who paul is i'm listening interesting do you guys remember that in addition to the cop in the interrogation room, on the other side of the one-way, two-way, three-way menage a trois mirror? It's two-way. Do you remember? There's <laughs> That's canon. You remember there's two other cops, and one of them consistently has no fucking clue what's going on. That's true. Right? Oh. The, there's a cop with a mustache, and the other cop constantly is explaining what the interrogator is doing. Right? He's just like, why do you ask him that? What's happening now? Right. Who is this guy? <laughs> and then there's the other cop who's like, he's he's trying to get him to change his story. No, he's he's it's an interrogation. It's it's. I think that guy's Paul. I think oh, that's Paul because he doesn't get that's it. Paul and the other guy keeps trying to explain it to him. Full circle. Wow, that really ties this uh, whole thing together. But yeah, he finishes the story about getting cheated on. Right? He's like, yeah, you know, she's met someone else. And I was really thinking about that Bible passage you said last week. And I don't know if I was about to cheat on my wife. It it really helped. And Derek. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I got to stop you. At this point, I was like, really? I, this is where I realized it's a Christian men's group. Mm -hmm. They actually took out a workbook at one point. Yeah. Which, God, I, this is my nightmare. And then it's Christian. It's even worse. <laughs> so he, he shares the story about his wife meeting somebody. And then he asks What's that Bible verse you shared last week? In my head, I was like, which fucking Bible verse tells you how to be cool about your wife finding another person? <laughs> yeah. What a wildly generic fucking Bible verse, right? Because like, because there isn't a good one for it, right? There's no verse where like the Lord says unto Abraham, thou may take another wife unto Sarah, but thou shalt set all her texts to private. <laughs> <laughs> but then we get the Bible verse. It says... 
the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life. End of quote. That's the whole Bible verse that's supposed to fix marital infidelity problems. <laughs> that was written for him. <laughs> Yeah, because Derek has no chill. I laughed so hard at this. He's like, you know, that Bible verse, it really helped me with my terrible life that really is troubling. And Derek's like, hey, um, apropos of nothing, what was that Bible verse? Just in case I was going to fuck someone tonight. <laughs> Just, can I get that Bible verse real quick? Because I, I got one of those half boners where it could get hard, but it's not hard yet. And I was just wondering <laughs> if you know that Bible verse that cures boners Yeah, for people who aren't your wife. I just want to be clear. The thief, the thief in that Bible verse is his penis, right? Oh. Like if you rewrote the verse, it would make, it would actually track, right? Like my penis has come to steal and lie and deceive, but my not penis is here to bring life. Okay. But I have come that you may have life. Who is I there? I think, I think it's his penis versus God. I think it's the owner of the penis, right? My penis has come to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come that you may have life. Yeah, it's jerking off before the date. This is the biblical oh. advocacy for jerking off before a date. I is a is a a different temporal penis. No, it's you. Your penis is the thief. Yeah, and coming is coming. Yes, right. Like you come to bring life. Exactly. Got it. Okay, it's all coming together. <laughs> but your penis comes for its own reasons. Okay, Namely, but in to the kill, destroy. <laughs> But but in the show, Derek's like, no, that's perfect. Uh, thank you for that quote. I'm going to get stolen from, killed, and destroyed. But uh, Jesus, too. So I feel better now. Um, <laughs> my problems with my wife are solved. Great. Yep. This is a really good men's group. I'm glad we had this. <laughs> All right. Well, we made it through a men's group, a Christian <laughs> men's group. So we officially get a break. That is a union rule. And then we'll be back for the amazing, I assure you, amazing conclusion <laughs> Twist ending of Vindication, episode one. Dun, dun. F-A-N-C-Y-D-O-N-K-E-Y, fancy donkey. What's the donkey busy doing getting fancy? Hey, Eli, uh, what's with get up, man? Yeah, you look like if the penguin was less subtly anti-Semitic. I will have you guys know that I have a date night tonight with Anna, and I wanted to look a little bit nice for it. Nice. Are, are you guys going somewhere super fancy? Uh, no, we're just doing a like a picnic in the park. Well, dude, you're gonna melt. Possibly, literally. Yeah. Well, what choice do I have? Well, why don't you get some nice casual wear from Cuts Clothing? What's Cuts Clothing? Five years ago, Cuts founder Steve Borelli set out to create clothes for every occasion the modern man faces. Since then, Cuts has become the go-to choice of t-shirts, hoodies, polos, sweatshirts, and more. From their signature buttery soft Pika Pro tie blend tees to their cozy Hyperloop French Terry fabric hoodies, Cuts elevates clothing staples with cutting-edge fabric technology. Wow, that does sound nice. It is nice. They sent us a bag of stuff to try, and Cuts has become some of my favorite stuff to wear because it fits my body and it looks great. In fact, GQ Magazine calls the classic Pika Pro Tri-Blend tee the only shirt worth wearing. All right. How do I get some? Well, this month marks the Cuts' fifth anniversary, and they're doing it big with two collection drops, a product launch, and a week-long special event. Join the celebration and get 15% off site-wide by going to CutsClothing.com slash GAM. That's CutsClothing.com slash GAM for 15% off and access to anniversary events all month long. All right, guys, thanks. So long, penguin suit. You wore a tearaway tuxedo? Well, it is date night. Gross. Hey there, podcast listeners. You know, we've had a lot of fun here on God Awful Movies today, and we've made a lot of jokes, but some things are too important to joke around about, which is why I'm cutting in for a quick, serious moment to address something that was probably bothering a lot of you. Two-way mirror isn't a more accurate term. I know, I know, one-way mirror doesn't really make literal sense, given that mirrors are, generally speaking, one-way. It's a window that acts as a one-way mirror, and no doubt the original term was shortened from there, but two-way mirror doesn't make any more sense, because it's not a mirror two ways. It's only a mirror one way. The other way, it's a window. 
Now, this may seem unimportant at first, but despite a glass manufacturer on Quora saying that they actually refer to slightly different variations on the same concept, it seems that the terms one-way mirror and two-way mirror are used interchangeably, and that's fucking dumb, because synonyms shouldn't sound like opposites. The last time we did that was with flammable and inflammable, and that ended up melting babies. So please, don't melt more babies, just call it a one-way mirror. And now, back to your regularly scheduled episode. And we're back. When we left off, Derek had just learned about the biblical solution to his wife hating him for being boring and terrible. (laughs) And now we're back at the house with mom, his wife. Her name is Jamie, by the way. She never got named. I don't think she gets named in the whole... We had to go to the credits to find out that. I absolutely had to just check that on IMDb. Her name is Jamie. And she's putting their kid to sleep at their house. Yeah. And he wants to stay up and wait for daddy. And mom's like, no, you fucking can't do that. And he's yeah. like, okay, can I pray? And she's like, fine. It was a Christian television fine. show. We'll yeah, man, because kids, kids love praying. Praying is the new skateboarding. Oh, yeah. It's the new <laughs> planking. Absolutely. <laughs> also, by the way, daddy's at a men's only Bible group. So just don't listen to anything he says tomorrow or pretty much ever. Don't listen to that. <laughs> That's horrible. They have a workbook, by the way. It's, I don't know. Okay, I have a question. What do you think is in that workbook? <laughs> it's like, well, like problem sets with like Bible answers. Circle which of these is the Bible. And it's got like a copy of Hustler and a picture of the Bible. And it's like, oh, which one? <laughs> which one? But I love how passive aggressive her prayer is here. She's like, okay, oh, you want to pray? Dear God, please put my son to sleep. Also, fuck my husband. I mean, daddy. I hope his genital warts that he got from that toilet seat are fine. Good? (laughs) Go to bed. (laughs) And then we get some cross cuts between Jamie and Rebecca. Jamie being sad and Rebecca getting ready for the affair that they might have. For him to come over and... Oh, man. And she's just shitting horribly (laughs) from the poison she got. I could do an entire podcast episode on how the Christian set dressers made the good Christian bedroom versus the sexy whore Pier 1 bedroom. It's amazing. (laughs) The symbolism is chef's kiss. Look at Rebecca with her comfortable pillows and look at Jamie with her good Christian Weird quilt thing that old people have as a top blanket that no one wants or uses. Why do we have that? You just have to throw it out of the way. It's the so worst. Stupid. It's the worst. It, it, decorative pillows, and people who zip line need to go with the past. They need to go into the past. <laughs> this whole time, by the way, I was just rooting for Rebecca and Jamie to get together. Absolutely. And fuck Derek. Not fuck Derek. No, like, fuck Derek. Not fuck Derek. You know what I mean? Derek shows up for his affair with Rebecca and he sees her and Jamie doing it through the window. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's <laughs> ironic for me to get mad. Does the Bible have a verse for this? I think I this? need a different men's group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kind of men's group. Now I see why she was recommending it. <laughs> and the text, the text Rebecca sends is fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. So they, they finished the cross cut. And then we watch Derek get into his car, leaving the men's group, and he gets a text. What does it say again? She texts it. Well, so first of all, first the wife texts him and is like, I miss us, right? And then he's like all frustrated. And then Rebecca texts him and is like, I have a surprise for you tonight. Cookie emoji, kiss emoji. Yeah. And I just wanted on the record that at this point in the show... The producers have now used both taco and cookie as stand-ins for vagina. I feel like the, I feel like the next scene is literally just going to be Rebecca deep frying an entire tilapia. Yeah. <laughs> he opens the door to her apartment. A bunch of eggplants fall out. The director wanders in front of the camera. My daughter told me that's what it means. It means you got a bunch of eggplants in your room. Okay. I took that text literally, and I'm thinking to myself as Derek, and I'm like, well, if she doesn't have fucking real cookies that she's baking, that's fucked up. That's just teeth. He's- storms into the apartment. Where the fuck are the cookies you promised? Me? Hey, 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 you'll suck my dick. Whatever. Where are the cookies? You said cookies. Where's the eggplant parmesan sandwiches? What's happening? <laughs> Words matter, Rebecca. <laughs> Where's the tilapia? So now we cut back to the cop interview place. So the cop's like, I'm sorry, is your story that you were going to fuck a lady but then you didn't and instead you sat in your car alone 
talking to God. That's your alibi. And Derek's like, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cop asks with no fucking sense of irony. You know what an alibi is, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, speaking on behalf of the viewer, he's like, I was talking to God. You know what an alibi is, right? You know what that word means. <laughs> but then the cop's like, but you know what? On second thought, talking to a ghost God, Christian God? Okay, got it. That's a good yeah. alibi. And then the detective interviewing him is like, look, this isn't going to hold up. All right, I've done this a long time been on this beat a long while you know you need to tell me a different story right which is very common do you, do you want to do over yeah. but that's actually that's a very common right police tactic because like the moment you change your story they fucking got you right story, like, everybody see? fucking knows that right so derek is like okay you want me to do a do-over on my alibi all right uh <laughs> sweet i didn't know we get those that's great yeah mulligan breakfast ball uh you know what? I was telling the truth. My alibi is still God. <laughs> and when he introduces it, when Cop Guy turns it off and says, you want to try that again? I literally thought the actor was trying to give the other actor another take. That was the only possible thing I could imagine was him just being like, that was really bad. Do you want to do it again? Have you read the script? You feel like you're not off book. Do you want to try it? Just do it a <laughs> more time. I don't want to tell you how to do the job. But no, the cop's like, yeah, I believe you. That's that's locked in. I believe you. So continue the story, please. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's time for the big confrontation with his wife. Like all women who have been cheated on, she's sitting in the kitchen in the dark waiting for him. <laughs> right. Just once, I want to say, when we make god-awful movies, the movie, there's going to be someone waiting for someone in the kitchen, but we're going to watch them sitting in the dark kitchen just being like, oh, man, when they get here... <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, time to walk in the kitchen. And then they'll turn on the lights and I'll be like, whoa, I was here. I'm going to I'm gonna play some Candy Crush on my phone. Oh, my God. He's here. He's here. Oh, my God. Right, yeah, right. No, you Get can ready. see me. Get ready. The candy Urr, crush. I'm so mad. <laughs> also, like, we know this is the night that Rebecca's getting murdered while he's, like, coming home to his wife instead. How is this possibly the most interesting scene happening right now in this film's universe? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Just fucking like he's just talking to his fucking wife and there's like a fucking murder happening. Like, show me that goddamn scene. Yeah. The people who made vindication were not up for showing a murder. And she <laughs> opens this conversation by going, do I even want to know where you've been? And I wanted him so badly to be like, I mean, I don't know. Are you into cuck stuff? Because if you're into cuck stuff, I have been worrying over nothing. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is a big relief. Right. And she asks him directly, did you have sex with another woman? And he says, I can thankfully and honestly say no. <laughs> I was like, wow, man, just say regular no. Why are you doing normal. the weird acceptance speech? Just say no. <laughs> it is my deep and abiding honor to inform you I did not get a hando from that lady at my work. Whereas I resolve that I have not honestly. Heretofore, it should be understood. <laughs> But she's still mad at him because this is a Christian television show. And so texting about not fucking is still cheating. I think he's very clearly fucked around on her before, though. I feel like that was heavily implied. Is that not? Am I am I misreading that? Because, like, she's gone through his phone before. She can't trust him. No, I think this is I don't think that's implied. He was already going to the men's group. That's what's supposed to be implied. But this is like a pure flicks type thing. So they couldn't really tell you that. Right. Yeah. This was dumb. <laughs> I don't know. But now she's just mad at him for like flirty texting in the first degree. He says like, no. And she's like, why should I believe you? And he's like, because it's near the end of the episode. Because I'm sitting here. That was his actual <laughs> answer. Why should I believe you? Because I'm sitting here. <laughs> because Done. an object cannot exist in two points in space time. <laughs> it's true. If you had fucked her, you would have never come home to your wife and son again. So that's a pretty good point. <laughs> and then... He gives what's supposed to be this, like, you completely monologue, but it starts so badly. He's like, I want you to know, I hate you. I hate our marriage, and I'm a bad dad. And I'm like, okay, weak opening. <laughs> right. Also, I'm pretty sure you're a thief who wants to steal, kill, and destroy me. But Jesus <laughs> loves me. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is your fault, I would say, if anything, right? According to the Bible, it's your fault. Yeah. He uses the classic, I spoke to God defense here. 
which apparently is a fucking get out of jail free card for anything. Oh, God, this is yeah. an evil, evil trick that probably happens all the time in the Christian world. Oh, wait. Yeah, man. Like, they use it to fuck kids. Yeah. Not just other women. Like, <laughs> guys, I just came up with a so much a better cop show than Vindication. Are you ready? You'd almost Damn have me. to. It's a cop show where people commit murders and do terrible crimes. And then they're like, but Jesus forgives me. And the detective lets him go at the end of every episode. It's amazing. It's the ultimate Christian cop show. You just say you're sorry and whatever you did doesn't matter. Doesn't count. And that's kind of what happens here, right? Because he's just like, I want you to know, like, I prayed tonight. I spoke to God. And she's like, you spoke to God. And he's like, I know we haven't spoken in years. Like, not since the thing at the high school. Like, it's like, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, um, ever since I got with God's girlfriend, like, we haven't spoken. But, like, I'm, I'm fucking talking to him. We're talking again. And he's like, and God, God spoke to me. And he told me to come home tonight. Which is like just a fucking heartbeat away from being like, and it was like, it was crazy. I was sitting there in the car and God told me, you know, how important it was to come home and tell you I'm sorry and that we should start doing butt stuff. But I know. God no, was very, I know. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. It wasn't my That's idea. It was God. God said. No, 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 no. Not both our butts. He was really clear about that. Just yours. Yeah. <laughs> very important. Or just mine. Just mine. <laughs> Would it help to know that someone had a surprise cookie for me somewhere else tonight? So <laughs> you're you're going up against a lot here. He said start with a tongue. <laughs> so yeah, he sa- explains that God wants him to do butt stuff and he's going to be better. And the wife, again, he has not cheated on her. The wife's like, I don't know that I can trust you anymore. <laughs> I wrote my notes. Cool. Glad I came home. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been eating fucking cookies. <laughs> could have been eating cookies, having stuff done to my butt. She was making an entire salmon for me. <laughs> you never text me food emojis. That house was gonna reek of fish. <laughs> and so now we cut back to the cop, and the cop's like, "Okay, so you almost cheated on your wife. You texted someone, then you didn't sleep with her. Is that what this show's about?" And the guy's like, "Yeah, apparently that's what the show's about." And he's like, "Okay, well." uh <laughs> You can go home now. Are you ready, everyone? Here's the twist. Oh, yeah. He's like, wait, I'm free to go. And he goes, yeah, no, we already caught the murder. (laughs) We already caught the bad guy. I was just teaching you a Christian lesson. I was just Christian now. You're welcome. I'm a police detective. (laughs) It, It could have only ended better if like the cop had just reached over and like, magic grabbed his nose and been like we have fun here (laughs) (laughs) oh okay wait even better alternative ending the cop pulls off his mission impossible three mask he's the wife and he says now i trust you (laughs) (laughs) and then as the pin to the story as the perfect pin to the story he explains that the private investigator from earlier that was actually a stalker ex-boyfriend and he went Mm. and murdered her that night and he says, almost word for word, I'm saying this, good thing you weren't there fucking her, huh? Because no, you'd nope. have gotten stopped. <laughs> no, 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 you already fucked it up. He said, thank God you weren't there that night. <laughs> you probably, that probably saved your that life. That saved, thank God you found God in your car. That saved your life. Awesome prank I just did. Face, you're welcome. <laughs> Credits. That's the end of the show. The only way. That we can freely communicate to our viewers how ridiculous this ending was is like this. This ending would be like if instead of Kevin Spacey beating Kaiser Soze at the end of the Usual Suspects, <laughs> the cop was just like, "Eh, we were kidding. Some black guy did it. We got him. <laughs> we got him." That's the end of the show. That's the end of the first episode. Keep in mind that this television show, Vindication, you wouldn't fucking know it based on episode one, follows the story of the cop. This show is apparently about the cop who never even introduces himself. Detective Travis is his name one more time. Yes. And yes, this entire series apparently is about a cop who does murder interrogation pranks for Jesus. (laughs) For Jesus. That's the show. Oh, how good would it be if the door just opens as he's letting the prisoner out and he's like, hey, man, you're under arrest. You're not allowed to just lock people in our interrogation rooms and ask them questions. (laughs) Oh, shit, I'm not a cop anymore. (laughs) All right. So let's get a little prediction before we close it out. What is Detective Travis going to do next time to save a soul as a detective prank? 
I actually know because I binged the entire fucking season. <laughs> yep, me too. Me too. <laughs> And what he will do is continue to shame Jezebels for their whorish ways. <laughs> it's that the, the, he, he genuinely might, what happens. The second episode of this show might as well be called Slut Shaming Cop. Great. Wow. Yeah, the actual the actual answer by cheating is is worse than what you would have come up with. The guessing. next the next episode is all about a girl who sexts and the consequences she sows for her you know, Jezebelian ways. <laughs> Fantastic. The name of this second episode might as well be CSI Morality. <laughs> yeah, the show should be called C- CSI. You're going out in that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, that does it for our review of Vindication Episode 1. We're obviously going to get to some more of these episodes at some point, but that's not going to do it for the show just yet because we still need to get you excited for next week. So, Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath, when five friends get together for their annual lady gathering, their faith will be tested by tragedy, wine, and terribly written dialogue. We'll be watching Only God Can. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring the episode to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Moishi for joining us. Moishi, thanks again. Always. And, of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And then I'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Moishi and Eli, I'm Heath. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. After finding Jesus and reconnecting with his true Christian soulmate, Rebecca, Derek finally reclaims the Captain America shield and immediately (laughs) uses it to murder his wife and child. (laughs) That super soldier serum is no joke. Somebody went on to drink poison coffee from that intern, but we never address it. <laughs> Eli made it through an entire appearance without doxing him. Damn it! Sure, yeah, that's a great idea. All right, now I'm recording. I'm going to wait for the bar to fill up. It should happen right about, uh, you know, vaguely in the next. Yeah, you got to fill up the bar before you do a That's podcast. true. Yeah, it's got to <laughs> fill up. With, it's like a power thing in a Street Fighter move. I just want to make, I just, I just, I just want to be sure. Okay, now nah, it's good. It's good. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right, we got to do the five count again. Are you ready? I was born for this. Moishi. One, Moishi. two. Three, four, four, five. 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 Pseudonyms are for people who get their mic right on the third try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is everybody good? I could use water. Okay. <laughs> we just listened to Moishi make himself a cup of tea. <laughs> well, I've got to wait for it to cool down. Ow. <sighs> I heard okay, somebody definitely <laughs> hurt himself. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Oh, most importantly, look in front of you. Is there anything that you could pick up in your hands and start fiddling with? Because no, that's a good point. Let me let me grab throw it across the room. Last episode, you had a rubber band, and Morgan's going (laughs) to kill you. If he ever sees you, he's going to kill you on sight. (laughs) Do you have a bag of triscuits in front of you? Be honest. (laughs) No. Let me get some silly putty. No, no, because that okay, that, okay, you can hear okay. everything. That's be why fun, it's a microphone. Be, be funny enough to hold my attention. All right, let's. <laughs> I've been trying that for a decade, man. I've been trying that for a decade. All right, let's. Eli's let's... a mental fidget spinner. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so welcome back to the podcast. Great. Uh, okay, just. Uh, <laughs> I can hear your wet Jewish lips. It's so upsetting. I have no comment on that. He can also hear them. That's what he means. Here we go.
Welcome back. You good? He's good. Okay, for real. We're doing it. We're doing it. On, I got to find my place on it. Oh, it's right, right below we where you just were. Got it. <laughs> I was popping a pimple. All right, go ahead. Wow. Morgan, I tried. I took all the stuff <laughs> off of his desk. I can't take his own body away from him. Go ahead. I'm ready. Jesus Christ. Is that legal? Did you check yeah, with Andrew? Yeah, is that legal? Why are you giving me yeah. all the lines if that are going to get me canceled? She died under an oh wait, that's just manifesting. How, forward slash M A N. <laughs> and then there's are, are we going to talk about the did we, we we didn't talk about the private investigator yet? We did. Did we? Yeah, I said he looked like a carnival barker. You got some private investigator material? Jump in. I did. Well, here was my private invest. I'm sorry. I missed that. Here's my private investigator. How did you miss it? You're on a Skype call with us. <laughs> just jump in with like, and one more thing about the PI so that it makes and, sense. And one, I just want to clarify one thing about this scene. When I rewatched it, I, when I, I literally had forgotten about the private investigator until I watched it a second time to do the notes because it literally never matters again. Um, he will matter. Incorrect. Hold on. He, hold on. Is he the boyfriend? Yes. Yeah, he'll be part of the twist ending. But hold on. They never they don't clarify that. They do. They clarify the she was killed by her ex-boyfriend, but they don't clarify that that is the same dude. No, they sh when he says crazy ex-boyfriend, it shows a, a flash of him. Is that him in the, how, how sure are you that's him in the flash? I watched 100 this episode. Positive. Yes. <laughs> I so is he also a private investigator? I'm no, very no. He's just a stalker. He's not a boyfriend investigator. who owns a camera. But he was like talking to the client. He was like on the phone, being like, "No, he's just on the phone, being like, one second, I'm gonna have to call you back." It's a red herring, and Zmoishi, you fell for it. God damn it! <laughs> they got me again. All right. <laughs> all right, you can cut all that. That's all garbage. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay because Moishi was fucking checking his email in the middle of recording our podcast and fucking checked out for the three seconds we described the private investigator. I think it's just a very forgettable character. <laughs> All right. Uh, Eli, do you want to add one more cap to that or should I just close it? Yeah, go ahead and close it. Okay. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.